My name is Joseph Wunderlich. I'm a professor of engineering, architecture, and computer science. Full screen. This lecture is in a green architectural engineering class, maybe used for other classes too. <clears throat> this is my website, Stone Architecture and Computer Engineering Robotic. Um, both. I'm 61 years old. Um, we're in the syllabi here. And we're going to start, we're in this course right here. We're going to start out looking like a little bit for about 60 seconds, like the very first course I taught in 1988. Astron Astronomy Planetarium lecture. <clears throat> After doing architectural things, mostly, <clears throat> all, almost entirely until about then. All right, so we are in here. And students have already heard lectures up until right in here on solar geometry. Uh, they have a project, big project coming up, designing a new school for our campus. And it has to be lead, ND, planned neighborhood. Uh, we have an expert coming in, um, Brian Falcon, registered architect, lead AT, BD, and C, good friend of mine, 15 years here. Uh, in coming here, helping mentor students, start our architecture minor 15 years ago, and a lot of other things. All right, so let's go into here now. I'm going to play off the PowerPoint. Now. Oops, wrong one. Uh, we are up here, solar geometry. And then I'll, I'll revise this and put an MP4 in YouTube. I'll put, put it on YouTube. It's opening up. Up, open up. Second now. Let's see. Now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So, um, solar geometry. Uh, our sun. Um, 25 million degrees Fahrenheit. It's big, really big. You could fit 1.3 million Earths inside of it. It's a giant hydrogen fusion nuclear reactor. It's a star of average size, four and a half billion years old. Billion years old will burn out in about six billion years. So we don't need to worry about that. A lot of other things we need to worry about before that. Um, the Earth's orbit is elliptical. But this uh, does not significantly affect temperature changes on the Earth. And it's not what makes the seasons. The tilt of the Earth makes the season. So it's orbiting in a plane, elliptical plane around the sun, the Earth is. And then it's tilted on its axis by 23 degrees. And that's what makes the seasons. Um, and and the, uh, the, the, the correlating to the latitude lines running horizontal around the Earth. So the latitude lines run horizontally, longitude north, south, up and down. And this tilt creates the seasons. So as you're going around and around, so this way, go around and around the sun, uh, and you have a tilt here, and we're on the northern half, the northern hemisphere, and this is daylight time here, right? And you're tilted. Then the summertime, we get more direct rays, more incident photons per unit area, right? Photon flux. And then in the wintertime, uh, you know, up here, we're tilted away. That's opposite the people in the southern hemisphere. Uh, when it's um, the uh, you know, tilted the most here in the summertime, it corresponds to the longest stay of the year, and that's the summer solstice when it's tilted away. The shortest day of the year, that's the winter solstice on December 21st or 22nd. Uh, and then we have these equinoxes, which directly in the middle. And on these equinoxes, you'll see the, the sun is direct rising directly in the east and setting directly in the west on those days. And I guess I can use this picture as a little more. I'll just get this here so you can see it going around. And then, uh, and then equinoxes straight out of Addis. 
And then in the, in the summer, we're tilted toward the sun, hotter and to the tilted way. And Google Earth, you could go to that, I guess, take a look at that. Something that PowerPoint doesn't like. Okay, um, we'll come back to that. So, a couple uh, definitions here. When you're on the Earth and you're looking um, to the south, there's an altitude the sun is at, and it's higher in the sky in the summer and lower in the winter. And we're going to talk about active and passive solar design here. So you want to actively your photovoltaics to uh, optimally tilt towards the sun for all the best uh, exposure all year round. It, uh, uh, or you can have track it. That's a little costly, but you can uh, track track the sun. And passive means not any kind of devices, no no electronics, no motors, no anything, and just obeying how the sun moves with your design. Uh, let the shadows work for you, let the direct sun work for you, and both for light, lighting and thermodynamics. So you need to balance those. And sometimes they're contradictory. In the wintertime, they're not because you want the sun for light, you want the sun for heat. Uh, in the summertime, it might be contradictory. You don't want to overheat yourself, just and, and maybe you don't want too much glare either, but uh, you may be wanting as much sun as possible in, and you may be overheating your, your building. Um, <clears throat> So there's an altitude angle, and then there's an azimuth. And the azimuth is, if you imagine uh, uh, the surface of the earth and a line painted from where you are on the ground going directly off into the horizon. And then uh, another line going from where you're standing directly to where the sun is above the sky, but on the ground, that's your azimuth angle. So you have these solar paths, and in your uh, project coming up for your, uh, uh, actually both of your projects, in your, in your first project you're doing neighborhood design, but I want you to conclude these in here, understand the sun here, where you're designing for, and, uh, and have some kind of picture like this and other pictures I'll show you in a minute, describing the sun and how you are making use of it on your site, or your plant to make use of it, with your different buildings. You're designing it, School, which ideally would be more than one building, or only a school. You could be just one big one, but I'd prefer a couple buildings at least. Um, it depends what you're doing, too, kind of school. So uh, we already talked about this the solar path. Well, you can see it more clearly here. Here's an equinox. Here's the equinoxes, uh, you know, um, both are autumnal and vernal equinoxes. Then the winter, the winter solstice, the summer solstice. Now, this is for a particular location. On the earth a particular latitude so you know you might say ours looks a little different well yeah this is just a generic one um, if you're in africa we had one student uh, who worked with dr good in africa and she designed a building for that site there and that's right near the equator and right there uh you know the, this you know equinox is essentially right overhead and then the summer the sun's down a little further there so uh, the photovoltaics are just facing straight up. There's no tilt. And it's a little trickier to use the passive design there because the sun's directly overhead. You still can do it. Um, solar exposure, you have a window. And so this and design standards for architecture, you want to design between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. There'll be a solar window here. So first you want to figure out these trajectories, these the paths of the sun, you know, the summer and the winter, and that'll bound these edges of that solar window. And then you want, you know, and this is, you know, it's rising in the east, setting in the west. So this you know, day by day, sun's tracking along here. And you want to bound it here with these dotted lines like this between 3 p.m. and 9 a.m. or 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. That was switched around. Oh, it says 3 p.m. there. No, it doesn't exist. I am. I got to fix that. Uh, but you get the idea. Um, okay. And then, um, yeah, there it is. 
Yeah, this is the 9 a.m. I have my numbers switched around here. That should say 3 p.m. up here, 9 a.m. There, you can see it on the diagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then as we mentioned before, here's your altitude and your azimuth. And now uh, here is um, the solar window, what it looks like if you're standing on the ground. The other one was you know, up above. Again. And so you really should have both of these kind of things for your latitude. And then um, this diagram is particularly useful because you can see the exact angles of 